In this problem, we'll do a quick example of calculating numerical derivatives. We have some data relating the stopping distance of a vehicle to its velocity when it starts braking. We want to compute the rate of change of the stopping distances with respect to the velocity. In particular, we want to use the forward difference at the first point in the dataset, the backward difference at the last point in the dataset, and the central difference at all the points in between. The first thing you might notice is that all the data are equally unspaced. You might be wondering how can we even use the forward difference, the central difference, and the backwards difference formulas given here if the data is unevenly spaced. Remember that one of the assumptions we made when deriving the forward, central, and backwards differences is that the data is approximately equally spaced. I'll admit that there are more accurate formulas for when the data is unequally spaced, but for the purposes of this class, the given velocity data should suffice. When we compute the derivative at the first point in the dataset, we have no choice but to use the forward difference. That's because the central and the backwards difference all require the point behind the point of interest, which obviously doesn't exist at the very first point in the dataset. So the derivative at v equals 9 meters per second, as estimated by the forward difference, is 1.25 seconds. Now we move on to the interior points. The data set is 5 elements long, which means we have 3 interior points. One at v equals 13, one at v equals 18, and the other at v equals 22 meters per second. For all three of these data points, we'll use the central difference. The central difference derivative requires the point in front of the point of interest and behind the point of interest, but it doesn't actually use the point of interest itself in the calculation. This means for the derivative at v equals 13 meters per second, we need to use the data points 18 and 24, and 9 and 6. For the central difference derivative at v equals 18 meters per second, we need to use the data points 2233 and 1311. And now we've reached the last point in the dataset. To calculate the derivative at the last point, v equals 27 meters per second, we have no choice but to use the backwards difference. We're not allowed to use the forward or the central difference at the last point in the dataset because both of those methods require the point in front of it. And there we have it. We've calculated the derivatives at all five elements of the dataset. The last thing we should do is plot the derivatives on the graph that we're given. I'm going to do this because it's good to get a visual depiction of what the derivatives represent. The forward difference at the first point is just the line connecting the first two data points. The line representing the central difference is just a line joining the point in front of the point of interest and the point behind the point of interest. For the data point at 1311, it's going to look like this. And the central difference derivative at v equals 18 will look like this. Here's the line for the central difference at v equals 22. And finally, the backwards difference at the last point will just connect the last point and the second to last point of our data set. The data looks fairly linear, which explains why some of the derivatives look pretty similar. I'm going to eyeball the best fit line through these points. Based on the best fit line I very quickly sketched, the tangent to that line at v equals 13 might look something like this. This is decently similar to the central difference we approximated. If our dataset included more points, we could get an even more accurate approximation of the analytical derivative, but unfortunately we don't have that. Let's say we had twice as many data points and they resided in between all the data points we already have. So for instance, we would have a data point approximately here, 
here, here, and here. And let's just say maybe another data point out here after the last data point. The step size in between each data point would approximately be halved, so the truncation error of the forwards and the backwards difference will approximately be cut in half because the forward and the backwards difference have a truncation error on the order of h. When we cut the step size in half, the truncation error of the central difference will be approximately quartered because the central difference has a truncation error on the order of O of h squared. This concludes the stopping distances problem. I hope this quick demo of calculating the forward, central, and backwards differences was useful and it gave you a better insight into what the three schemes graphically mean. See you next time.